Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, dwyersportsbetting.com, free site. Today is March the 12th, 2018. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, from time to time, we talk about style matchups here that many people will disagree with, right? At first glance, it looks preposterous. You think Dwyer can't be serious, right? But the one thing I've learned about boxing more than everything else is that styles make fights. Guys who look like Goliath against a certain style will look like David against other styles, right? Think of boxing like a lock. Certain styles are the key to unlock that lock. Now, let's talk about a Hall of Famer. Mikey Garcia has just picked up a title in his fourth weight class, right? I'm not talking about his fourth belt. I'm talking about his belt in a fourth weight class. Even more impressive, right? He just won the belt from Sergei Lipinets at 140 pounds. Right, Garcia is an orthodox fighter. He's 5'6". Right, let's remember that. He's 5'6". He's a guy moving up in weight. He's a power puncher, a greater than 80% KO ratio. If you look at the CompuBox numbers from his fight with Lipinets, you're going to see that he landed an astounding... 45.5% of his power punches. Right? Garcia is accurate. If you look at the fight itself, and I've put the highlights of the fight in my favorites folder here online, you need to look at it sooner rather than later because CBS has been very aggressive in taking down all of these fight videos. You'll notice that the knockdown in the fight. Lipinets gets up off the canvas. Lipinets has a pretty good chin. But the knockdown from the fight comes from a very short left hook that Garcia, a guy with an excellent straight right hand, think Vladimir Klitschko, right? That Garcia throws as Lipinets jumps in and collapses the pocket. In fact, you'll notice there are times in this fight where Garcia is on his back foot. This is the slugger who actually has a back foot game that you actually notice, right? Now, in my opinion, as bizarre as this sounds, I believe that Garcia, who has fought twice at 140. He beats Adrian Broner, then he beats the champ at 140. That's how he picks up the title, at 140. Right? Understand in the Broner fight, Garcia's power is such that Adrian Broner, who's fought at higher weights, is on his back foot throughout that match. In other words, Garcia, very hard hitter, pound for pound. Right now, as odd as it sounds, I believe that because five, nine and a half Errol Spence, in other words, three and a half inches taller than Mikey Garcia, right? Because Errol Spence, a southpaw, gives away his height. In other words, Spence is a hooker. He's not a guy who tries to have a lot of ring coverage. He's not the guy who's far away from you who can hit you and hurt you from distance. He's not Deontay Wilder. He's not David Hay. Right? He doesn't have that telegram type punch where, you know, it looks like the guy is sending the punch from a different area code. No, Errol Spence is a guy who hunts you down and throws hooks. Because Errol Spence doesn't have great ring coverage, 
right? Because his power comes from him smothering the pocket, jumping inside. Dare I say, just like Lipinets did against Mikey Garcia before Garcia delivers a great counter left hook. And because Garcia, quite frankly, and he shows it in the Lipinets fight, because Lipinets is throwing a lot of punches. Because Garcia has better defense. In other words, Garcia's the guy who you jump inside, it's raining, right? Garcia's the guy who you notice has his hands up, is blocking most of the shots, right? Is moving away from your power hand, is defending himself. Because Garcia has better defense and, in my opinion, better countering skills. In other words, I get the feeling Garcia wants you to try to collapse the pocket. I feel that a Garcia-Spence fight would actually be competitive at 147 pounds for Spence's welterweight title. Right? Understand, Spence likes to come in, collapse the pocket, throw hooks, go to the body. Right? Mikey Garcia is a shorter man who, quite frankly, can guard against those body shots. Can make it hard for Spence to find him and can flush Spence away from right his left side by throwing the kind of short left hook that he did against Lipinets. right the difference between Mikey Garcia you didn't see a lot of Mikey's right hand against Lipinets. Lipinets is a champion after all he went in there with a game plan he knew Mikey has a great right hand understand they say the way to beat a southpaw is with a straight right hand. Isn't that what just got Deontay Wilder a successful defense of his heavyweight title? Right? Spence is a southpaw. I don't get the feeling that Spence is the boxer Mikey is. Right? Spence is probably stronger. Spence is one of boxing's biggest punchers pound for pound himself, and he's naturally bigger than Mikey Garcia. But let's just say Garcia knows exactly what Spence would try to do to beat him. Right? Collapse the pocket, come inside, go to the body. Right, Spence is good at throwing power shots low. Mikey is shorter. Mikey is lower. But what happens if Mikey catches Spence's shot? What happens if Spence doesn't throw enough straight punches? Is throwing things with a hook that a Hall of Fame opponent knows how to block? So, here online, there are YouTube videos. In fact, I've put one in my favorites folder here online of Mikey Garcia sparring with a guy who fought Floyd Mayweather twice, right? Some felt the first fight was close enough to warrant a second fight, and they had the second fight, right? This is a guy who stopped Adrian Broner. Well, didn't stop him, knocked him down. Broner goes the distance. Right, but even Broner would concede he lost that fight. Right, Marcus Maidana. And what you'll notice, because Maidana, who is an orthodox fighter, right, in terms of righty lefty, unorthodox style, but orthodox fighter, Maidana has a lot of the same fighting traits, a lot of the same tendencies as Errol Spence. And as you look at the film, you'll notice. That Mikey Garcia, who normally is the hunter, right? Garcia is a guy who 
Again, greater than 80% KO ratio. His signature is to win by knockout. You'll notice that Garcia is very quick on his feet. Garcia throws much straighter punches than Marcus Maidana. Right? Much straighter. I'm assuming Garcia throws much straighter punches and has the faster hand speed than Errol Spence. You'll notice Garcia against Maidana is able to land hooks. He's mobile. He's harder to find than you would expect a hunter to be. Right? Given that Mikey Garcia has privately, in sparring sessions, been in the ring with bigger men who are hookers, who want to collapse the pocket like Errol Spence, Given that Garcia has better defense than Spence, so if the bullets start flying both ways, I would expect Garcia to be the one blocking more shots than Errol Spence and countering better. Given the fact that Garcia wins the lightweight title against the Southpaw by KO, Right? I would love to see a fight between 5'6 Mikey Garcia, who just won the belt at 140, against 147 pound champion Errol Spence. Based on just looking at the guy's styles, I get the feeling Mikey would have a harder time against Sean Porter than he would against Errol Spence, right? Spence, what makes Spence great? His willingness to come in, test the pocket, collapse the pocket, come up close, throw bombs, round after round, right? Return fire against Cal Brook and wilt him, right? In their title fight. What makes Spence great is exactly, in my opinion, what would cost Spence against Mikey Garcia, right? Spence would be on his front foot. We know that. I'll be the most shocked man looking at the fight if Spence suddenly busts out a jab and is on his back foot up on his toes dancing. I would expect Spence to be flat-footed, Spence to come forward, Spence to collapse the pocket. Spence's punches are wider than Garcia's. The way counterpunchers think, Garcia's going to think, look, when this guy starts to throw, if I could roll with the punch and block the punch, I'll have a split second to throw the kind of devastating short left hook that he used to drop Lipinets with. Let me say this too. If you look at that Libanets fight, that's not the only left hook Mikey lands. Mikey, who's not high volume in the fight, lands several of those short left hooks. Right? Garcia has made a habit of being accurate. Right? I think he's more accurate than Errol Spence. I think this would be an interesting fight. I don't think you can beat Spence backing up. But if you know your way in the pocket, if you're a good short counterer, right? If you know how to just lift your feet and move enough to force a hooker to reset. If you're the one who can throw straight punches, I think you have a chance against a hooker. Right? Put me among those who, despite the size gap, despite Mikey Garcia's lack of experience at 147 pounds, right, would be very intrigued by that fight. So apparently Richard Schaefer, right, one of my favorite boxing promoters, involved with the WBSS, the tournaments that did not get enough publicity here in the United States, Richard Schaefer, after the fight, is talking to Mikey Garcia. And in effect, Schaefer says to him, hey, what about Errol Spence? And Garcia apparently said, hey, 
I'm open to that fight. Right? Garcia, who's highly technical, I'm sure knows all about Errol Spence. Right? Garcia, who has gotten titles in the four weight classes below welterweight, probably has already scouted the welterweight division. Probably already knows who the players are and what some of their strengths and weaknesses are. So, let me just encourage everyone to look closely at the Garcia Lipinets bout, especially the shortness of Garcia's hair trigger left hook. Right? It's a quick left hook that reminds me of Floyd Mayweather's left hook. Right? Just to understand, you don't see Garcia's explosive right hand that much in the fight. I believe you would against a southpaw like Errol Spence. Right? Spence, no doubt, would try to physically bully Mikey Garcia. I'm just telling you, as I believe, Jeff Horn is going to find out the hard way against Terrence Crawford. When you try to physically bully a guy who can shorten his punches and who has the timing to be a great counterpuncher, you're asking for trouble. Right? So let me hear from you. 147, by the way. Wow, looks like a war zone right now to me, even without Cal Brook. Right? You have Terrence Crawford invading the division, taking on the champ. Right? You have great fighters trying to pick up belts in new weight classes. You have Mikey Garcia not running away from questions involving Errol Spence. You have Keith Thurman about to return right, to what really is a war zone. You have Danny Garcia still upset that he lost to Keith Thurman. So Garcia is taking it out on everyone else in the division. And then you have contenders, dangerous contenders, like Sean Porter still in the water. Right, let's just say as interesting as 147 is. If Mikey Garcia, who's a free agent, he's not beholden to any one promoter, ends up in the ring with Errol Spence, this division might just blow the top off the building. Anyway, let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. If you feel that Errol Spence is simply too big for Mikey Garcia, tell us how he's going to use his weight. Do you think he's going to be able to what? Lean on Mikey Garcia? You think Mikey is going to be surprised if Errol Spence comes after him and tries to cut off the ring and collapse the pocket? Do you think a Hall of Famer like Mikey Garcia, right? I think he's 30 and 0 now, right? Still has more than an 80% KO ratio. Titles in four weight classes. Do you think he would take a fight against a dangerous knockout puncher like Errol Spence, who himself has a knockout ratio greater than 80% without a game plan? Right? And do you think Garcia, a guy who has trained with people like Marcus Maidana, right? Talk about collapsing the pocket. <laughs> Talk about throwing hooks off at the side. Talk about punches at weird angles. Do you think he would be intimidated by hopping in the ring with a bigger man like an Errol Spence? Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section. Thanks for stopping by.